Good morning. Good morning, Akshya, Akshya, and Vishalini. Good morning. Veta, good morning. Okay. So yesterday I already announced, right? So there will be two types of videos, full length uh, chapter videos and uh, brief one hour summary session for one chapter, right? So yesterday I started with this microbes in human welfare detailed discussion part by part part one part two part three you, within three three to uh, two to three parts we'll complete the lesson either four parts okay six uh, six topics subtopics are there in this lesson microbes in human welfare so what you can do is uh, after this summary session i'll be posting the link okay and so you can go back to that uh, video and you can see the detailed uh, explanation on this chart Okay, now we will have a quick uh, summary session on on this lesson, right? Good morning, Abhinithi. Yeah. Jina Priya, good morning. So every every day, uh, like uh, except Thursday and Sunday, you will be having seven to eight uh, full length, full chapter sessions will be there. Whenever you are free, you can access uh, right from the channel itself. Okay, but I will be on. Uh, I will be in live that point of time. Two to uh, two p.m. to three p.m. at the same time. Seven p.m. to eight p.m. Apart from these classes. Okay, yeah. So today uh, only one lesson we are going to deal because uh, biodiversity and its conservation already done. Right summary session. Right. So what we can do is uh, we will. We will quickly go through an half an hour uh, in this lesson and then we will finish this and then I will leave you uh, so that you can prepare for the test or prepare uh, for the rest of the day. Is that okay? So this lesson is uh, quite an important thing because of uh, its examples, especially different examples we, uh, we get. Yeah. <coughs> Fine, let's start with this lesson that is uh, in this uh, quick, you know, quick, quick outline uh, session of uh, NCRT chapter, uh, you know, NCRT 12th standard chapter, chapter 10, that is microbes in human welfare. So in this, what we're going to uh, learn is that how this uh, microbe of microbes or microorganisms are useful for or beneficial for the mankind. Right, so that is our focus. So I hope uh, metric students who are there, they already downloaded the NCRT textbooks, ebooks that I already gave a link. Right, I hope you did. So that if you go through this lesson and if you have any doubts, you can uh, reach me in my number. Okay. So in this, we have six parts to deal. The first one is uh, how these microbes are used to utilize for uh, household purposes, industrial purposes. Again, in industrial purposes, uh, products, we have different types of industrial products we have, we are getting from microbes. And then sewage treatment or sewage treatment plant, STPs, at the same time, biocontrol agents and biofertilizers. So these are the aspects that we are going to cover today, right? So quickly, we will go through this entire uh, chapter. So. Uh, when microorganisms are concerned that we, we used to get, uh, you know, bacteria, viruses, fungi, which are harmful as well, as well as they are not the same organisms, but there are other organisms within that classification, which are beneficial to the mankind. So in this chapter, we will be dealing with the beneficial aspects of the microbes. So in human health and disease chapter 8, we dealt with the harmful aspects of the microbes, be it fungi, be it fungi or uh, virus or bacteria or uh, nematode, whatever, like whatever organisms we talked about, especially 
pathogens, but uh, the nematodes, those are all comes under uh, pathogenic organisms. Now we are confining ourselves to learn microorganisms, right, like by bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Their beneficial aspects. First, first one to start with is uh, household products. So household products, according to your NCRT, what they have touched is the lactobacillus, lab bacteria, lactic acid bacteria or lab. So here, the uh, if you see this uh, lactic acid bacteria, the lab which acts on the milk. Shamili, good morning. So. Uh, if you see this uh, lab, this lactic uh, lactobacillus or lactic acid bacteria would act on the uh, you know milk, and eventually it converts into curd, the curdling process, and this is taken care by coagulation or partial digestion of milk proteins. Right, so this fresh milk can be converted into curd by adding some curd to it means the curd which has already uh, which already has this lactobacillus few numbers would be used as inoculum here the term inoculum you need to be understand inoculum or startup culture is something which uh, that culture would have you know few microorganisms right especially this lactobacillus numbers would be you know minimum numbers so once there is, uh, you know, minimum quantity of uh, lactobacillus is added to the milk, so they divide, they reproduce, and obviously the number would increase. <coughs> okay, so that's why we use this startup culture. So which has a few number of uh, few uh, microorganisms like lactobacillus, and eventually when we add it to the fresh, you know, fresh uh, milk, they eventually grow and they will be obviously converting this milk into curd so this curd uh, also increases the b12 vitamin b12 in curd this lab this lactic lactic acid bacteria so this is one of the you know uh, uh, uses of uh, having curd it's curd is better than the milk that's what right so at, at the same time there are other uh, you know Household products we get is uh, dosa, idli, right? These are all fermented foods where they, the dough would be, you know, would be, you know, uh, puffed up. So they, it would be bulged because of the production of CO2, because the CO2 is an product of the fermentation, anaerobic respiration. So in this way, in household uh, products, uh, when we talk about this household products, microbes in household products, right? See this idli, dosa, at the same time curd, that daily what we use, right? These are all uh, products of the, you know, useful aspects of the microorganisms. Especially what, what we are talking is we are talking about the lactic uh, lac, uh, lactobacillus when it comes to curd. And there are other bacteria which uh, occurs, which which involves in bacterial fermentation or uh, anaerobic respiration, which results in the production of CO2. So this is one more example. So here you need to focus on the examples. So you need to focus on the examples here, and then Baker's yeast, right? Baker's yeast, if you see, <coughs> Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used for you know making bread by fermenting the dough again the dough would be raised and then that is later baked so when the bake when the baking during the baking process what happens is you know have you seen that the bread is so soft and uh, puffy at the same time it will have a uh, pores pores in it right so that pores are due to you know escape or evaporation of the fermented products like co2 you know end products of fermentation like co2 and ethyl alcohol would be actually escaped uh, from this, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, dough, uh, you know, once it is baked. So after baking process or during baking process, these gases would actually eventually leave this bread, leaving this bread porous and soft. Right. So this is Baker's yeast and uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. You need to remember the name of the organism. And then comes to the traditional uh, drink that is toddy. 
the toddy is again a fermented sap from uh, you know palm trees so palm trees you see the spot would be attached to it and then they collect the sap and that uh, sap would eventually ferment to give this uh, traditional uh, drink called toddy right so this is one of the aspect uh, of the microorganisms like that we can uh, we can uh, uh, no use this microbes this microbes are used to even ferment the fish soya beans and bamboo shoots and even they are used to produce cheese cheese as well so when we talk about cheese we have a different types and varieties of cheese in ancient they gave uh, a cheese which makes a larger poles right so if you see this this uh, you know cheese right swiss cheese which which will have larger holes in it most probably we used to see this uh, cheese with larger holes in uh, tom and jerry shows right so that jerry would actually eventually go inside this holes and all so just uh, in that way you can just uh, relate to it it means that holes are actually you know formed or or due to produce due to co2 and if you see that these are all uh, you know dairy products at the same time the same raw material can be treated with different microorganisms to produce different products so propyl uh, bacterium shermani is the bacteria where we use uh, to produce this this type of cheese right so these are the uh, examples for the uh, household products right microbes in household products so one of the aspect of the microbes is done right so but on this microbes uh, in household products yesterday i gave a detailed explanation so you can visit that video and you can get benefit out at the end of the class i will share the link as well okay maybe after half an hour i'll share the link and that class is just 20 minutes you can go go ahead with it okay so you can utilize like that and the next one is microbes in industrial uses so this is most important aspect because in this industrial products we have different types of uh, products we are getting it for example so far what we have seen is uh, you know something which uh, uh, which is at the home level right small scale small scale level but when we talk about industrial level they have to produce in a huge uh, huge amounts right so they have to be produced in a industrial level huge portions proportions so for that matter right uh, Uh, we use these microorganisms to uh, to you know to meet the demands as well. For example, if we want to pro uh, produce uh, antibiotics, we need to have a tons of uh, or uh, you know the amount of antibiotic and uh, antibiotics that we want to produce needs to be uh, high, high in quantity, right? We can't just produce in small small quantity, right? So in this industrial products. we have different types of industrial products we get from this microbe so first one is uh, fermented beverages so if you see this beverages like wine beer whiskey brandy rum gin you know all these uh, you know uh, different uh, fermented beverages are actually you know can be produced uh, by using the microbes different microbes are used to produce different type of an end product So here, if you see again, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae can be used to produce, uh, you know, used to produce even ethanol. Okay. So there are again uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, fermented beverages are of again two types. One is uh, dis produced with distillation, without distillation, purification. right so process of distillation is taking place uh, in the case of of uh, uh, whiskey brandy rum and gin but without distillation we get so these fermented beverages uh, again they use uh, different microorganisms uh, to produce these products and then coming to the antibiotics uh, we already knew the uh, antibiotic what is the first antibiotic uh, uh, produced and uh, who produced uh, who actually you know uh, what is a produced discovered antibiotic or the first antibiotic to be discovered you guys are there are you guys following please please do answer the question
what is the first antibiotic to be discovered and who discovered it is it is it is that antibiotic still effective Guys, please do respond. So we're dealing with the industrial, uh, uh, you know, microbes in industrial products. So we're talking about antibiotics right now. And I asked a question. Is my voice and uh, video is clear? Are you able to follow? First of all, are you guys able to follow? Yeah, penicillin discovered by Alexander Fleming. Very good. Yes. Okay, very good guys. So, yeah, correct. <coughs> I think it took uh, time to type it seems. Yeah, good Akshya, Akshya, Krika and Vishalini and please do others also, please others do respond. So when we talk about antibiotics, now penicillin is not that effective because we have got uh, resistance towards, uh, microbes got resistance towards this antibiotic and uh, Penicillin is not alone uh, antibiotic. We have hundreds of antibiotics right now. Okay, and then uh, we talk about uh, uh, when we talk about uh, what is it? Chemicals, enzymes, and other bioactive molecules uh, which we you know produce in industrial level. Those are organic acids, alcohol, enzymes, right? At the same time, cyclosporin, statins. There are five things which we will discuss in chemicals enzymes and other bioactive molecules which are you know which, which are produced by microorganisms yeah Akshita, correct yeah so if you see this this example for example they, they may give column a that is uh, citric acid acetic acid butyric acid lactic acid and they shuffle the order of the microorganisms so you need to match they will be, give the combination so if this is where you may find you know, these are little memory based questions and by the organism name itself, you can relate a few organisms names with the product it forms. For example, Acetobacter acetai, acetic acid, right? Uh, Lactobacillus, lactic acid, Clostridium butylicum, butyric acid, Aspergillus niger, citric acid. So these are the back, uh, these are the organisms, microbes and the products they form. So these are all organic acids. <coughs> You may, you may be asked as column A, column B type of equations and then coming to alcohol, alcohol is produced by this uh, yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is to, which is actually to produce ethanol. Ethanol we, we use in a different lab settings, right, purified, unpurified, crude ethanol will be used in a lab, spirit lamps, etc. At the same time, enzymes. So what are the enzymes do we see in this, uh, you know, uh, industrial level like lipases so lipases are used uh, as an uh, uh, used in detergent formulas right so they uh, they remove the oil stains or oily stains right and then pectinases and proteases which actually clarifies it it, it undergoes clarification it means it, it uh, these pectinases or proteases would help in uh, clarification clarification in the sense like uh, uh, if you see this uh, bottle juices, right, they will be much clearer than the normal fresh juice. Why is that? Because of the usage of these pectinases and proteinases, which makes the juice very clear, as simple as it. And then streptokinase. So streptokinase is produced by streptococcus and it is used as a clause buster. So this clause buster, you need to remember at any cost because it has a significant role in removal of clots from the blood vessels. Right. So whoever the patients who are actually 
you know uh, finding difficulty with the myocardial infraction they be uh, they will be injected with streptoc streptokinase so that it will burst the clots or it will be used as clot buster so it clears or removes the clot from the blood vessels so this is one of the enzymes so within the enzymes we have uh, three different enzymes lipases pectinases proteases or streptokinases and then comes to the fourth one that is cyclosporin a so the cyclosporin a which is produced by the fungi that is trichoderma polysporum right used as an immunosuppressive agent so we know what is immunosuppressive agent which actually suppresses the immune maybe because uh, we use this immunosuppressants uh, especially when people undergo this uh, transplantation procedures maybe you know uh, we get uh, organ transplantation or uh, the to keep up the transplant intact we use this immunosuppressant so the immunosuppressive agents are nothing but this one of the cyclosporin a is actually produced by the fungi trichoderma polysporin right so the same trichoderma you got in uh, human health and disease also right when we directly come in contact with trichoderma it is a fungal disease but this uh, trichoderma even it can it can actually produce a useful product as well that's what uh, this microorganisms and then statins the fifth uh, type of active compound that is statins which are produced uh, by uh, monascus purpureus which is an again yeast right which actually lowers the blood cholesterol so these are the different molecules are produced at the industrial level right so these are all industrial uses of the microorganisms first we talked about fermented beverages and within the fermented beverages we have uh, distilled products and uh, products which form without distillation and the organisms involved in it you have to once go refer back and then antibiotics which are produced from this uh, microorganisms again right now we have got a uh, number of antibiotics which may be, which we eventually uh, extract from different organisms and then we talked about the third one third aspect that is uh, chemicals enzymes and other bioactive molecules right or uh, uses of the microbes in this five aspects are there one is organic molecules alcohols enzymes and then cyclosporin a and statins so these are the aspects of the uses of the microbes in industrial products formation of or production of industrial products right so this is a very small chapter and easy chapter that's why i think uh, many members didn't come i guess okay next one is microbes in sewage treatment or sewage treatment so we talk talked about sewage treatment plants stps right in this stps again uh, there would be two types of treatments one is primary treatment secondary treatment and the secondary treatment is much important because uh, biological it is otherwise called as biological uh, treatment and here where the the pollution is actually you know uh, pollutants are actually reduced so how is that reduced the flocks example formation of flocks and composition of flocks also they may be they may be asking so flocks are association of uh, you know bacterial association with fungal filament fungal filaments so this flocks would form eventually uh, you know grow on this uh, you know primary effluent which we got from primary treatment so primary treatment and secondary treatment what is the difference is the primary treatment is something there are there is there were no uh, microorganisms involved only physical process and by you know by porous and other membrane structures it will be physically a uh, physical process like filtration sedimentation processes that there, there will be separation of this sludge so this primary sludge and the superintendent the primary effluent would be eventually especially the primary effluent would be passed to the secondary treatment that is biological treatment and and flock formation will be present on this primary effluent so once the flocks are formed right we can uh, you know uh, this uh, <coughs> so what happens is when this flocks are growing right the organic matter uh, within this effluents would be utilized by this microorganism so once the organic matter is utilized the bod comes down once the bod comes down it means it is less impure so that's what here the uh, the relation between the organic matter and the bod is very essential so BV, bod uh, until the bod decreases this this process would keep on taking place the secondary treatment right so once 
once the flocks are formed right so this uh, this effluent is then passed into settling tank where the bacteria flocks are sedimented so this uh, once the flocks are completely formed the mesh like structures with which are bacterial and fungal association filamental association which grow on this uh, primary uh, you know this effluent and uses it uses up this entire organic matter and finally what we do is we will we will uh, send this flocks into the sedimented uh, you know sed uh, uh, settling tanks right and now this is called activated sludge so these statements are important what is activated sludge activated sludge pick the correct or incorrect statements regarding activated sludge might be one of the question right so now this this is something uh, you know activated sludge is there na it is mixture of uh, microorganisms etc so this activated sludge again can be used as an inoculum to serve uh, to to serve as inoculum into aeration tanks so if you see this flock formation would be taking place in you know open aeration tanks aerobic bacteria for that matter right so uh, it would be a huge tanks and uh, this flocks would be formed so this once uh once the flock formation is done and one flocks are sent to settling tanks part of this activated sludge now we call it as activated sludge so activated sludge part of activated sludge again it will be introduced into this aeration tanks as an inoculum so that again this process can be kept occurring again the flock formation etc once the flock form again they will be moved to the settling tank and now it is called activated sludge again they will take this inoculum and put it in the aeration tanks right so first is aerobic treatment flock formation so you need to know the flow chart aerobic treatment flock formation activated sludge inoculum and then the remaining sludge will be pumped into anaerobic sludge digesters which will be anaerobic uh, bacteria will be there organisms which digest this sludge right so here are some anaerobic bacteria would digest this bacteria and fungi in the sludge by producing gas by producing gases like, like methane h2s and co2 so this can be used as biogas so this is this we can use it as a uh, by products right so as an uh, biogas formation so this is how uh, you know use microorganisms to treat the sewage treatment like sewage sewage especially household or even industrial wastes right not all industrial waste but few okay this is how uh, we we have got uh, to lower the impurities and to leave uh, uh, this uh, an household uh, sewage into water bodies with less pollutant we use this sewage treatment plant so likewise we have got uh, india introduced two different plants like ministry of environment and forest uh, you know initiated to uh, plants those are ganga action ganga and emina action plants so you should remember these two plants by government of india right so with this we have completed half of the chapter let's let's move to the next are you able to follow guys are you able to follow i hope this you know this kind of a discussion would really brush up your uh, past knowledge and it will be really useful okay yeah whoever attending the classes i really you know heartily congratulate them and uh, appreciate you guys for uh, you know taking this much interest to really listen to your teachers and uh, make use of uh, time in a best manner right so okay let's move on that is microbes in production of biogas so biogas production in class we have already seen we talked about different types of biogas uh, plants we talked about right so here we use this microorganisms like methanogens which are uh, which lives in an uh, adverse conditions right uh, so this uh, anaerobic uh, which grows like actually anaerobically right on cellulosic material and which produces methane so methanogens produces methane and they grow anaerobically on the cellulosic 
material. So this cellulosic material will be actually used up and then they, they will be producing methane. Example, we have methanobacterium. So this biogas uh, composition is important. What, what exactly the composition of biogas, right? And the types of biogas plants, right? Uh, one is concrete or floating one, right? And if you see the uh, uh, if you see the diagram, right? So you need to once if they give give the diagram in the NCRT, the, the, the you know the biogas plant and the inlet and the outlet, right? So if they give the diagram and they may ask, they may uh, they may point at one point one thing and they may ask what are the products here, what are the you know raw material here. So this is a point where you need to focus the diagram points. Okay. Yeah. So next aspect uh, is that this biogas or gobber gas uh, generation biogas plants are introduced or developed by the you know uh, by IARI Indian Agriculture Research Institute as well as Khadi and Village Industries Commission. So remember this whenever you find in uh, government under uh, undertaken. Uh, action plans or uh, for example uh, you know awareness camps slogans you know these institutes names and their functions their role in the lessons are utmost important okay a for any competitive exam okay so this is about the biogas production just focus on the contents of the biogas what are the different what is the composition of biogas etc so next comes to the microbes as an uh, biocontrol agents. If you see this biocontrol agents, so biocontrol means we are actually using a biological methods to control plant diseases and pests. So without using any chemicals, we are directly using organisms itself. For example, why we are not using chemical pesticides or insecticides or really harmful for both plants as well as for environment itself. So that's why we are trying to use this uh, biocontrol methods. They are right from conventional to obvious uh, modern techniques uh, we can use. So especially if you take this biocontrol agents, we use Bacillus thuringiensis BD, right, to control this butterfly caterpillars. So this ca this caterpillars actually, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, a, you know, the, which lives and which eats up a lot of leaves. We use this BT. <laughs> right, so dried spores of this BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, or mixed it water and sprayed on onto the vulnerable plants. So plants which are getting affected by this, you know, this uh, caterpillars will be spraying this BT, you know, spores onto that plants, right? Uh, or wherever the fruit, uh, fruit, uh, you know, fruits are there, fruit bearing trees, etc. We will be sp uh, spraying this uh, BT spores on. So what happens is uh, uh, these spores will be eaten up by the caterpillar in the, and then what happens is this will go eventually into the gut of the caterpillar, and then they release the toxins. So when the toxins are released, this larvae, because this caterpillar is a larval stage, right? So once this larva is get uh, uh, once this bacillus uh, BD releases toxin, BD toxin, obviously the larva would eventually die. So that's what in advanced way we used, uh, scientists have introduced BD, uh, BD toxic genes which produce BD toxin genes directly into the cotton so that the cotton balls or cotton plants are safe from the you know different uh, attack from micro, you know, other organisms. So in this way we can control at the same time again comes the fungus that is trichoderma species these are actually free living which are uh, present in root ecosystems which control several pathogens so this uh, trichoderma species will be introduced into this plant so that there will be free freely living in the roots right which control the the uh, spread of or uh, the you know the effects of the other pathogens from the root because root uh, root would be one of the point of entry right entry of the pathogens where this trichoderma can take care of and then uh, when we talk about viruses uh, baculoviruses right uh, 
so otherwise uh, especially uh, you know when we talk about this baculoviruses right so these viruses can be used as a biocontrol agents as well as you know uh, to actually attack insects and other arthropods right so these baculoviruses are actually species specific okay when we talk about antibiotics or other uh, you know products we talk about narrow spectrum and broad range of spectrum broad means broad range it actually it has a broad range and general kind of an uh, uh, you know what is a effect on the pathogens but if you see this baculoviruses they have narrow range and specific for the species right and they have uh, you know uh, insecticidal applications as well so when we talk about this ipm nothing but integrated pest management right so we use this baculoviruses to control this pests and insects right especially this uh, insects so that's what without using any chemicals right without altering the composition of soil or not affecting degrading the uh, degrading this uh, environment we can use this microorganisms as well so this is the biocontrol agents and the last aspect that what we going to discuss is bio fertilizers right so are at utmost important so what are the role of baculoviruses trichoderma species right how do they are used used right so they may give uh, whether they are introduced at the which which where exactly they control the pathogens right at the same time bacillus thuringiensis so these are the different examples you need to focus on bio control agents and the lastly microbes as bio fertilizers when you talk about bio fertilizers right so bio fertilizers are nothing but organisms that enrich right nutrient quality of a soil so when you talk about soil soil is what actually hard and hard of the you know plant in the sense that soil if the soil is not fertile right if the soil is not uh, fertile and it doesn't have nutrients and it doesn't have a quality nutrients obviously the plant cannot really yield a better results so in in uh, in case uh, in in spite of using uh, you know artificial fertilizers we can use bio fertilizers so what are the different type of available options we will see so here in bio fertilizers we can uh, separate the, them as an uh, bacterial free you know aerobic and anaerobic and then uh, uh, what is a fungal associations okay so in bacteria uh, we have uh, a rhizobium which is a symbiotic bacteria which presents in root nodules of leguminous plants so this this uh, leguminous plants rhizobium we are studying right from uh, ninth standard so you should be remembering so which helps in fixation of molecular nitrogen right the nitrogen n2 will be actually fixed into more usable form like nitrates and nitrates right and especially when when we talk about this uh, you know bacteria or concern we have free living bacteria in the soil like azospirillum and azotobacter so which actually enrich the nitrogen content of the soil so if you take this a uh, free living bacteria so this free living bacteria can be introduced uh, you know into the uh, soil or this the soil which contains this free living bacteria like azospirillum and azotobacter which actually enrich the nutrient uh, or nitrogen content of the soil So when we talk about fungi, this mycorrhizal association is a symbiotic association, right? And here the genus Glomus is important because it is given in NCI, right? So Glomus is it a fungi, bacteria, or something which which may which may be asked if the paper is easy, right? So it is a symbiotic association with the plants. Fungal fungus is associated with the plant. So what exactly it does? So it, uh, it helps in absorption of uh, phosphorus at the same time it gives resistance to the root borne pathogens so this fungus is present at the roots which actually gives resistance to the root borne pathogens it means uh, the uh, pathogens which actually enter through root and infect the plant they will be stopped by this uh, genus glomus or this mycorrhizal association so and even it helps in overall growth and development of the plant so if you see this i have given this as an uh, and this explanation you can find it in even uh, outline you can uh, you know uh, you can have it in your uh, uh, i will be posting in the study material today worksheet so before that first read the ncert and then come back to the outline and 
both at a time you can do and then practice according to the plan I gave. Lastly, when we talk about cyanobacteria, that is blue green algae, right? So, the blue green algae, which is an autotrophic microbe, which can fix actually across atmospheric, atmospheric nitrogen. So, here we need to know the examples of the cyanobacteria, right? Blue green algae, uh, anabena, nostoc, and oscillatoria. Right, so when we introduce these guys into paddy fields, right, so this cyanobacteria can serve as an important biofertilizer. Right, so these are the examples of biofertilizers. So divide into bacteria which is free living, bacteria which is uh, present in uh, association within the organism, symbiosis, symbiotic association, and free living, and then mycorrhiza, fungi, and then uh, bacteria. Uh, uh, when we talk about uh, autotrophic microbes right those are nothing but cyanobacteria though so these are the three different uh, aspects or three different you know uh, types of microbes are involved in the uh, you know used as biofertilizers so with this we completed this uh, lesson that is uh, microbes in human welfare so what i will do here is uh, i am sharing a link here okay so here you will find the detailed uh, uh, discussion on, uh, you know, uh, yesterday, the, the same topic. I mean, the same topic in the sense like uh, microbes in human welfare. So before you, sorry, one minute, just a minute, hold on. Okay, so you can access this link where it is uh, part one, part one, chapter 10, the same chapter with a detailed explanation. So you can go through this uh, video and uh, uh, you know you can make use of it. So we will be talking about 10.1. So today we'll be talking about today 7 to 8 p.m. We'll be talking about 10.2, uh, 10.3 in a much detailed way. So this is very quick review session that what have happen now as I promised I already I'm already making detailed explanation of every chapter so that you can access at this playlist so individual lessons of 12th standard and 11th standard you will be finding two type of videos one is outline brief outline and you will be having detailed description part wise two types of videos and now what we are discussing is a outline okay thank you guys and prepare well and uh, thank you for the uh, interaction. So please go through this uh, video as well. Thank you. So is there any doubts? Okay, fine. Okay, Rob. thank you. Stay home, stay safe. Take care of your health. Okay, we'll meet you soon in the evening. We'll see you, we'll, we'll see you in the evening uh, 7 to 8 p.m. Thank you. So please do uh, hit the notification bell so that you will get notification whenever I go live. Okay, subscribe and share this uh, uh, you know channel link for uh, as many members as possible. Every students can be utilizing this entire videos series of videos for their preparation for NEET and CBS students also. Thank you guys. See you.